presence, Lord. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's... Uh, I, I just thought of doing it differently uh, this Sunday. Uh, because I want to do it... I want to uh, start the whole service with communion and then we can uh, get into the word. But it's very important to understand why we actually do communion. And uh, today I'm going to talk lots on the, the, the different things that we've been speaking in the past about uh, covenant, about justice, about rituals. And uh, we're going to talk lots. So uh, let me start with this first. Why, why do we really need communion? Okay, and, and I want to explain what does the whole communion symbolizes. So if you go to, let's go to Genesis chapter, chapter 3. Okay, let's, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter Yeah, chapter 3. And uh, chapter 3 talks about how humanity fell into sin. Yeah. So, you know the story, right? How humanity fell into the sin. Right? Okay, before, before a, you look like all sad, you look like all uh, somebody is uh, having a gun on your head. So look at each other and at least smile at each other. See, your body language uh, projects to me a different energy. Yeah. So when you sit like this, you're too, too comfortable in your zone. Yeah. So somebody give a big shout. See, you're still comfortable in your zone. Yeah. <laughs> big shout. Okay, let's give a big shout because Jason is going. <laughs> okay. So, I don't want it to be very serious, okay? So, because, come on, let's make it very, uh, let, let's allow the spirit to flow in this place. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, if you see, in Genesis chapter 3, it tells, it tells about the story of... Uh, what is what happened? They are irritating him. We might need the lights later on. Yeah. Now it's okay? Or these lights? Okay. So, uh, Genesis chapter 3 talks about the fall of humanity. Right? So, what, what, is the, what is the issue in the whole thing? What is the issue in the whole thing? What's the fall of humanity is all about? What it is all about? Come on, let's, let's talk. What it's, what it's all about? The whole fall of humanity. Yeah, Adam, ate, Adam and Eve ate from the tree. And we say they committed sin. And the Bible says they fell. Right? Am I right? Wrong? Yes. yes? Okay. So what is... Uh, how did they fell? So they eat the fruit and they fell down? No. So what happened? <laughs> yeah, so you, you have to understand what is the fall the Bible is talking about. Okay. Now, look at the story properly and it says that these guys ate the fruit and look at chapter 3, verse 8 and it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Can you see that? 
Did you hear that? Yeah. Who hid themselves? Adam and Eve hid themselves. Did God hide? No. Did the presence hide? And this is this is very important because it tells you the what is the whole story about. Adam and Eve Eve hid themselves. That means now they are thinking differently. Everyone say Adam and Eve are thinking differently. Look at somebody and say Adam and Eve are thinking differently. So before that, before the fall, they were not thinking differently. Were they hiding themselves from God? But it's when they ate from the fruit, they are hiding themselves from God. From the presence of God. Are you there? Try to understand what is really happening. They are trying to hide themselves from the presence of God. In other words, they are trying to knowingly be unaware of God's presence in their life. Okay. And then God comes and then this God says, why are you hiding? And then they start their story. They say, because we ate from that tree that you told not to eat. That's why we are hiding. And we have, see that. Ah. Okay, look here. It says, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Are you with me? They were always naked. But now, they are thinking being naked is bad, evil. Because they, eat from, they ate from the tree of good knowledge of good and bad. So now, they have become polarized. And they are saying being naked is bad. And no one should go into the presence of God naked. Are you with me? Yes. Like I had so many people ask me, is it right to pray in the toilet? So many. Somebody asked me, I declare script scriptures all the time. I remember long back. Somebody asked me, I declare scriptures all the time. Only when I go to the washroom and the bathroom, I stop declaring. Is it right? Because there I am naked. So they apply nakedness as something evil. evil. Right? So when I, had go, when I was in the seminary, they, before me, years before me, a generation before me, they had a, they had a rule for the Jesuits. So, when they would go to the washroom, they would not look down. And they would switch off the lights and have bath. No, that was the rule. That was how it was. And you know, they had this hood. Right? The priests, the monks had the hood. You know, why do they have that hood? Because... They, they wear it when they go out. The hood is, they are not supposed to look at other women. If they lift their head up, the hood falls down. And if the hood falls down, they have to go through a certain process of confession and all this long process to put that back again. Are you there? So there was all this kind of stuff uh, which was practiced, then later on they scrapped it out. Just before they could sleep, they would do something called as penance, where they would uh, look and think if they have committed sin, they used to take a, what do you call that, v whip, and they used to hit on themselves before they would sleep. This is a this is real, real thing. 
And so, some of them, and these stories were told by my senior priest, some of them who did not want it to hit themselves, they would hit on the bed and simply shout, ah, ah. The, I'm just going uh, di different direction, but I'm just, what I want to tell you is, the whole idea that nakedness was bad now has come into their mind. And so they think nakedness and holiness does not go together. And so they think God has come and now I want to hide myself. And then God asks them, who told you you are naked? In other words, who told you that nakedness is evil or bad? And so look, what has changed here is the way humanity is thinking. In other words, change in consciousness. That's the word. Change in consciousness has happened. And it has happened in the mind of, it has happened in the mind of God. In whose mind there is a change of consciousness? Change of consciousness has happened in the mind of humanity. Are you there? Yes. And so the fall of Adam and Eve is not just, oh, they fell into sin and they are going to go to hell. The fall of Adam and Eve is called as the fall of consciousness. Loudly. What is the fall? Of thinking. They were thinking higher, now they are thinking lower. And therefore you have to understand the purpose of Jesus. To die on the cross, the Bible says, you were, your minds were first enemies to God. Due to sin. Your mind, in your mind, you thought that you are God's enemy. Are you with me? That's what the Bible says. Trust me, it's there. So when you fall into sin, it is your mind that started thinking that now because of my sin, I am enemy to God. Are you with me? God never thought he, you are his enemy. Humanity started thinking we are God's enemy. Not only God, now look what is happening. The whole of Genesis is explaining to you a fall of consciousness. In Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, whole of humanity is one with, the, with everything. Are you understanding? In Genesis chapter 3, now the mind shifts, the consciousness shifts. And so, look at it. What is the curse that is there? The curse is, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herbs at the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat the bread till you return to the ground. So now, read that, and it looks like God is cursing us. But that's not really the truth. You see, that's how Adam is look hearing God. That's how the guy who is writing the book of Genesis is hearing and saying, oh, God cursed. But is that the truth? No. The truth is now humanity thinks, I have sinned so God has cursed me. And so humanity thinks, now what is happening? The earth and me are enemies. That means God is in everything. And so now since I and God are enemies, now I and everything is enemy. Right. 
I and the ground are enemy. The ground, the earth is enemy. I and the wind is enemy. And the water is enemy. Are you with me? Are you understanding? If you get a revelation, shout. It will help in two ways. One is you'll receive the revelation. Other one, other thing is if you're feeling sleepy, you'll wake up. Or somebody else will wake up. I'll wake you up. Okay. So, now, <clears throat> try to understand our minds are programmed in such a way that our mind think that everything around us and it's a, it's a separation mindset which thinks everything around us and I are not one. Everything is my enemy. And see, your inner reality is your outer reality. Come on. Why things are not happening in your life and my life is because in your mind you have programmed that these things are your enemy. Why are you not getting the job? Because deep in your subconscious you think you will not get the job. Come on. Deep in your subconscious, you don't you 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 believe that you don't get you won't get the job. Why are you not getting married? Why are you not getting a good life partner? Deep in your subconscious, it's programmed for you not to get it. Come on. I mean the worst of the worst looking girls get good boys. And the worst of the worst... I know girls who are so beautiful, but no boys. <laughs> Till yet not, they are married. So it's not about the beauty here. <laughs> it's not about the career. It's not about anything. Come on. In my college days, I did not have a girlfriend, but a bus conductor did have. That also college girl. <laughs> yeah. I would get good marks, score well, but I didn't have the conductor head. So it's not about the looks, it's not about the job, it's about your inner reality, <laughs> your subconscious mind. Thank you. Are you there with me? And so, the subconscious mind believes this is my enemy, this is my enemy. And the subconscious mind thinks certain things you got to, you, it is your, you entitled for it. So, you get those things easily. So, some people, no matter what, they always have finances. And some people, even after they get married, they always attract because they think they are subconscious is entitled. You understand me? I mean, single people are not getting life partners, but married people have two, three affairs. Subconscious is very powerful, right? So, There are some things your subconscious or your mind believes that you are entitled to it and some things of your subconscious or the mind believes that's your enemy. That's why you don't get it. Are you with me? Now look at what Jesus did. The Bible says Jesus died on the cross so that you who thought in your mind that he is your enemy, God is your enemy, you may reconcile with him. Are you with me? So it's a game right now, it's a mind game that is happening, a mind game 
that your mind which needs reconciliation now because you think you have done wrong therefore you deserve to pay for that wrong thing it's embedded in your subconscious because the world works on give and take the world works on an equation of paying a price are you with me without paying a price you don't get anything that's how the world equation the whole world the collective consciousness works on that equation and so whether you believe it or not deep down unconsciously you know that you have to pay a price for something that you do are you getting that are you understanding what i'm trying to tell and so in some areas of our life we are enemies to certain elements of the world and that's what god is trying to say you are you are the curse of the ground so now adam is thinking the earth is not my friend now anymore and if i try to do something the earth is going to bring me thorns and i have to struggle and i have to sweat then only the earth will give me what i need and the and the animals they are going to come they are going to attack me and the water if i jump into the water i will get drowned because why you know why you get drowned in water not because you don't know swimming you get drowned in water because in your mind you think the water is your enemy can i prove it to you take a newborn baby and throw it in the water it will swim automatically you don't need to teach the baby to swim do you know that baby is born put it in the water baby why it's coming from pure consciousness no programming and then the baby starts getting programmed years and then suddenly now that same baby born to swim is getting scared of water i mean 90% of you i throw in the water will die you know why because in your mind you think the water is your enemy you have been programmed to think the water is your enemy throw the baby baby is back stroke butterfly stroke everything how does that happen because now you think and i think the water is my enemy you and i think the earth is my enemy you and i think the wind is the air is enemy so there are there are five elements you go to any kind of philosophies there are five elements earth water wind fire and ether and so falling from the fall of adam and eve is a fall of thinking of consciousness which says now all these five elements are my enemies and so what jesus does is jesus dies on the cross and says now you have been reconciled to god believe through my death you believe that you have been reconciled i have paid the price and now when you look at the cross and you think okay jesus has paid the price and now i am reconciled with the entire elements and so now you become a friend you become one with those elements those elements are no longer your enemy now and that's why healings and miracles happen when you focus on the cross are you with me now because that's how you're getting you're getting your job before you were not getting a job because you thought in your mind that getting that job you have to literally struggle why do people who come for prayer and after believe in jesus believe in the cross start getting financial blessings because before the prayer they thought that 
they have to struggle to get the finances. They have been programmed like that. After the cross, oh, Jesus paid the price. And now they reconcile and finances come into their life. Are you with me? Come on. Are you understanding this? So he, you try to understand it's all in your mind. It's your consciousness that has fallen. It's not, it's, it's not that sin which is an issue. It's the consciousness that has fallen. That is the issue. Are you with me? No one tells a dog how to, no one teaches a dog how to swim. It just swims. How come you forgot? To swim. How come I forgot to swim? How come I need to pay 7,000 to learn swimming? It's a simple example. And so now, what we need to do, that's why, you know, all these phobias, they are, they come up. I'm getting scared of snakes. I'm getting scared of cockroach. I'm getting scared of this. What has happened? Why are you getting scared of them? Because you are not one with those elements. You are not befriending those elements. You have not reconciled yourself. Are you understanding? Why are you gluten intolerant? Why are you lactose intolerant? Why are you... Because we have not become one with that element. Why the other person is okay? So it's not the lactose which is problem. There is some deep thing that is actual issue. Are you with me? Like, Conrad is very much connected to the earth element. So, I see him. He'll play with scorpions, he'll play with all those things. Snakes also, right? He doesn't, he's one with them. He has reconciled. For them it is no longer, like for you it is yak. For people in Vietnam, cockroaches and snakes are yummy. Either. So we are, in our mind, be f we need to reconcile, be friends of these elements. Where? In which realm we have to be friends? Can you tell me? In the realm of deep subconscious realm. In the realm of deep subconscious realm. And so, Jesus now says, you got to befriend all these elements because I have paid the price. They are no longer your enemies. And trust me, when, I, when you say, you know, the earth element, the amount of support system that you will get if you befriend the earth element. It's like, I am the best friend of Prime Minister Modi. Can you tell me how much support I'll get? It's, no, no, he's my best friend. I have a fan following from Prime Minister Modi. You see how much support I will get. So if you have, if become, if the earth becomes your friend, there is a massive, massive, massive benefits. Like there will be, there are angels that are only related to the earth element. There are demons that are only related to earth element. Are you with me? Angels and demons. They are related to earth element. Even the demons are going to be your friend.
Even the demons are going to be the be your friends. So can you imagine the massive power that you're going to get when your subconscious is one with the earth element? All the demons connected to the earth element. All the animals connected to the earth element. So the mystics of the, if you check the mystics in the past, now we had today St. Anthony's Feast, right? St. Anthony's Feast. If you listen to his story, listen to his story. One story is there's a wolf that comes to, I think that's the story, right? The wolf comes to destroy something in the village. Saint Anthony talks to the wolf. That's it. He doesn't come again. He becomes like a friend, like a dog to Saint Anthony. At one place, no one listens to his preaching. He goes into the water, near the water, and he starts preaching to the fish, and all the fish come up and listen to his story. How did that happen? What is he doing? Come on, he's becoming one with the element of the earth. When it comes to the wolf, he's becoming one with the element of water when it comes to the fish. Come on. That's the mystical living. If it was some today's Christian believer would say, Wolf, ah, wolf, Lord, I pray that this wolf, be, wolf dies or this wolf is an evil spirit that is coming, right? It's a demonic spirit, right? Because we think like that because there is a mind is programmed, that's why this doctrine is, 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 is actually worse doctrine. There's a frog in the house that's an evil spirit. And I should throw the frog out. Are you there with me? This doctrine is a Worst doctrine, because it's programming you to become enemies with these things. And so it's very important to become now one and be friend with it. And that's why the Bible says, you'll pick up the snakes and they shall not bite. The lion will play with small kids. Because now you can be one with these elements. And how do you do it? In which realm? The, your subconscious mind. And that's why we have these logos, thanks to Prophet Kirby. These logos that, this is, can you uh, see the other one? The earth element? Yes, earth, earth, yes. This is a logo of earth element. When you keep looking at it, and you close your eyes, and you see it before your eyes, with your closed eyes, it, it affects your subconscious mind. And it allows you to be friend of that earth element now. It, it's, this, is like, this is like programming your subconscious mind to become friend with the earth element. And so you need to look at it, close your eyes, and then you get into the earth element and say, hey, you guys, all the demons of earth element, you are my friend. <laughs> all the animals of the earth element, you are my friend. All the angels of earth element, you are my friend. Let's work together. Are you with me? All you guys, thousands, millions, billions of the, you guys, spiritual guys, can you do one job for me? Get a nice boy.
get for you. And Jesus was connected to these elements. That's why he said, when Jesus wanted money, he said, hey, you know what? Go to the water, fish, uh, fish. And out of the mouth of the fish, a coin will come. With that, do the payment. He was one with the elements. When the wind came, see, he would walk on the water because he was one with the water and he said, hey, look, both are friends, don't drown me. They, are, they were alive. And so, when, it, when the storm came, hey, he did not say, you storm, you are bad and evil, you are demonic, I command you to go out. He said, hey, wait, wait, relax, relax, chill. And the storm, chill storm. Because both are friends. Both are friends. And so, when you look, this is a symbol of earth element. When you look at it, you go inside of it and you, and you declare what you want. As if you have got it. So you go there and you say, Where's my phone? You go there. You go there and you say, Earth element, bring, I, I, I can see myself with finances. I can see myself with the best of job. I can see myself with all these things connected to the earth element. You understand? And so it is very important, like, to bring increase in your life, earth element. To bring beauty in your life, earth element. To bring development in your life, earth element. Yeah. To establish something, earth element. To bring friendship, earth element. Your court cases, your law dealings, earth element. Are you with me? Promotion. All these things. Confidence. Wealth. Earth element. So when you want all these things, you need to be friends with them. How do you do that? Go there. In the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Because this is a hack to program your mind. Are you with me? And then, it will be quick. Guys, listen to me. You can't get blessed by crying aloud and saying, God, please give me this and give me that. It doesn't happen that like that. There's a protocol that we need to follow for things to happen in our life. What's the protocol? Fix your mind. Same way with the water element. Can I have water? I'll have coffee. This is water element. What an element has to do with emotions? Like just before I'm coming for prayer, like two people came to me and said, pray for me. One said, pray for me because so that tomorrow this job has to be done. Nasilia pray, asked me to pray for her job. And uh, Jason asked me to pray for his job. I told her, I'm not praying for you. You employ, you have employees working under you, you give them the job list, they will do for you. 
just put the protocol in place. If you are struggling with something, it's because of your subconscious mind has not reconciled with that thing. <coughs> Deep inside, you're, you're facing, the reality is you're facing your own subconscious mind. That is your devil. And you need to fix that devil. So when something wrong happens in your life, it is not that. That is not the issue. The issue, the underlying issue is your own subconscious mind. Come on. And it's so important to do, to do these things, you'll get your job. Why, is, why somebody gets job easily? The person follows protocol. Abigail has followed a protocol. Got a job straight on her lap, in her lap. Like, come, come, tell no. Tell no. Come, come. She's doing a meditations, all these meditations. The reason I'm asking her to tell is so that you might get encouraged that if that can happen, why can't your thing happen? Right? You did not. See? Go, go, sit. Uh, okay, so uh, we were... Uh, Okay, go, I'm telling. So recently, uh, her ex-boss called her up and said, we are starting a branch in uh, Chinchine and said that you got to work only half day and you will be pay paid double the amount which, what she used to get before. Or same, same, same amount, right? Almost same amount. She used to play, she used to work full day. Okay. There was a prompting of an angel. Uh, so, uh, I wouldn't say that like, you know, I was like uh, praying, praying for a job. But then like, uh, I had that, uh, uh, like, uh, I always wanted to uh, like, you know, work into finance. So I had that, that wish like in me. Uh, so what happened was uh, 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 I was working for this company before it was into finance. Uh, I was I worked there for around like two years. So um, so that particular boss he like uh, like uh, meaning like you know he calling me it was like completely like a miracle. He, uh, somebody like him, like he, like it was like, you know, completely going against his ego. And after I left the job, I really, like, you know, I was not in touch and all with him. And so it was not like a, we were having a good relationship. So that day out of the blue, he just messages me saying that, you know, uh, he wants somebody for his uh, new office. And uh, he said, uh, it is only going to be, like I used to work nine to five that time and the salary was so and so amount. And now he said, you only have to work half day and uh, the salary is more than what I used to get that time and double, exactly double of what I was getting now. So. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. So, she did, you, you see what, I know her pr prayer protocol. She was doing the Yadev prayer, the Mysterion prayer, the Ledger prayer. She does these elements happened, right? <coughs> so, what is the ledger prayer? It is actually a covenant that you do and a ritual that you do. I've been teaching in the past. 
You're saying, I'm going to pray for seven days or I'm going to pray for 21 days. You're putting in a commitment. And when you could put in commitment, I'm telling you, you are actually making your subconscious mind ready to receive your blessings. A covenant or a ritual is a hack to prepare your subconscious mind to give you your blessings. And that's why it's important. 21 days of prayer. The Catholics have been having it beautifully. We call it novenas. Nine days they will pray and then they will light a candle for those nine days or they'll go for mass for those nine days and by the end of the nine days they get their thing. How does it happen? This is... This has nothing to do with this religion, this denomination, that denomination. It is a basic principle of how to prepare your subconscious mind to receive your blessings. Are you with me? That's why I, you, you understand. I, you guys make only one commitment. Just say for the next three Sundays, no matter what happens, I will come for prayer. That's enough. Your subconscious mind will be so open to receive things. Or you say, next seven days, I'm going to meditate on this. Elements. That's it. Boom. Next three Sundays, we're going to do this. But you don't have commitment. You understand. You are, you, if we have a mindset of a beggar which says, give me God, give me God, give me this, give me that. But from our side, there is no commitment. How will, it, how will you receive? If I come to you with my closed fist and say, give, 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 how can I receive? I need to open my fist to receive it. Your subconscious mind has to be open for your blessings to come into your life. The reason why we are not getting certain things in our life is because in that area of our life, our subconscious mind is not open. So what do we need to do? We need to start meditating and reprogramming the subconscious mind. Because meditation is the only kind of a way or the best way for programming a subconscious mind. Ah, are you there with me? You call it meditation, you call it prayer, whatever it is. That's the only way. Your work is going to get done. I mean, crazy. That's an amazing testimony. And the reason I told her to give this testimony so that somebody over here who is struggling, your mind will get subconsciously prepared, programmed to get a miracle like that. Are you with me? A testimony opens your subconscious to get your miracle done. That's why I told her to tell this. So people who are struggling, huh? yes, your, her pattern gets imprinted into your subconscious mind. So you are like, oh wow, she got it, I'm also get, going to get it now. It's a pattern that is imprinted in your mind. So people who are struggling like you, you got to take it. This is, this is the church all about, guys. The church is about the reason why you need to come here. It is very scientific. Trust me. We have made it crazy. Yeah? What is it? We have made it religious. But there is, there is so much of blessing just coming and sitting here. There's so much of energy. There's so much of collective energy that is going on. The matrix is changing. Our subconscious mind is getting changed. There are so many things happening that we are not aware of, we are unconscious of. Just coming here, things start shifting in your life. Do you agree then?
one more. And I'm going to preach one more. Today you're going to get a miracle done, right? What is preaching? I'm, as I'm preaching, and as you are listening under me, there is repatterning happening, reprogramming happening, and there's immense blessing coming into your life and my life. Yeah, you say amen, receive it. Because when you, the authority figure is the figure that programs your subconscious mind faster. The father can program the child's mind faster than anybody else. That's scientific. And so the father in the house, the authority figure, can quickly do it. So that's why if you really honor me, and if I prophesy over you, it will happen. Why? The, I program you to get blessed. Have you ever noticed people who come new, I prophesy over them, and things happen just like that? And you've been sitting for so long things and you're struggling with it. Measure your honor. How much honor you're giving, how much importance, how much you're training your body or your system to receive from me. The more, the more reverence you give, the more you train yourself to give reverence, importance, whatever I say in your life, it will happen, guys. Even if I jokingly say, it will happen. Are you with me? It will just happen. Like, the other day, I am telling Jason, it's going to rain, it's not going to rain. Every time I say that, it's happening exactly like that. And he's like, what man you are? <laughs> so this, there is an immense network that is there. There's an immense web that is there. Immense, which we can't see, guys. Which It's so scientific. It, it's so amazing that we can't see. We can't, but just because we can't see it, and we can't understand it at a very deeper level, does not mean it is not functioning. It is functioning at a very amazing level. And all those things are important. Crea having a ritual, having covenant, coming, having a commitment and saying, I'm going to come to this place no matter what happens. What happens? You are giving this place, this Sunday, this two hours, so much of honor, so much of importance and so much of commitment that if I say a word to you when you're here, it will happen. It will happen. Imagine you have so much honor and you are something very, very important that you have. You don't do that and you still come into this place. And I say a word to you. Imagine how powerful it will happen in your life. Come on. And so these small, small things are important. Everyone says small, small things are very important. We are not becoming religious, guys. But I'm trying to give you a scientific background so that it can come from within you, not I imposing it on you. See, in this place, I don't preach about finances. In, in a sense, I don't preach about tithing. I don't preach about offering, right? Because I don't want it imposed on you. I don't want it to be imposed on you, saying that, come on, give your finances, give your money for the kingdom, give, give, give. I don't want it to be imposed, but it should come from within you. That's why I don't say, I'm looking at your heart. 
I'm looking at your heart. And where your treasure lies, there is your heart. The whole, you understand, if you read the Bible, it says, Abraham, there was no tithing concept. During the time of Abraham. But Abraham himself says, I am going to give one tenth to God after of all that I have won. Guy was richest man on earth. He was the richest man on earth. Because he made a covenant with God. You see, it's Abraham makes a covenant with God saying, I'm going to give you one tenth. It should come from within you, go outside of you, not outside within you. Within you, go outside of you. That's grace. That's why the Bible says God loves cheerful giver. Because it's coming from within you and goes outside. It's not a rules on regulation of a religion. Are you with me? So I don't preach, but you need to you need to sit down and look into my your life, and you need to use that protocol and say. How much do I need to give for me to get blessed, for my subconscious mind to open up? This is the hack. I need to use it. Come on. The issue is not God. The issue is your own subconscious mind. Help yourself, not anybody else. Like just because I'm not preaching about finances, guys, it's not that you don't have to forget about it. You need to go into self-evaluation and say, how can I make a covenant with God? Are you with me? How can I make commitment? Without your commitment to God, guys, nothing will happen. Forget this grace doctrine. It's not going to happen without a commitment. But how much is your commitment? In small things, everyone says small things. Small things. My commitment from my finances towards these things. My commitment towards me coming every Sunday for this church service. My commitment to this collective group. Your commitment is what is going to define your finances and your blessings. Because that God that you think is outside of you and whom you have to please is actually inside of you and that God is you. So you need to make your own self happy to receive your blessing. Your own subconscious mind prepared to receive your blessing, not some external God. No. Are you with me? I wish many heard this message. Some, some people come, when they get blessed, no news of them. <laughs> in this place. But in all that, who is at loss? They. That's why the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. Is there something that changes in this place? 
look at somebody and says, when we come together, something is changing in my life. She doesn't have anybody to talk to. Just talk to her. <laughs> something changes, everyone. So all these elements, we got to focus on them. When we got to focus on them, you will see miracles, science, wonders happening in your personal life. Like a company itself will call you and say, come for the job, like for her. She didn't even dream about it. Her old, she had left the job, her old boss, he calls her. What has happened? Can you see in the realm of the spirit what actually would have happened? Maybe all the demons and angels of earth realm went and sat on... If he doesn't hear this sermon. Sat on his head. <laughs> sat on his head in the night telling, okay, you know, Open a branch in Chinchini and put Abigail in that branch. All the angels and demons not giving him sleep till he opens a branch and calls here to him. It's time for you to get blessed. It's time for everything to shift in your life. Come on. Like, I remember uh, Conrad was not getting uh, staff, working staff at his uh, restaurant. So he went into meditation and he saw some animals, right? And he was telling those weird looking animals, go and get me staff. By next morning, he had staff. Come on. Both angels are my friends and your friends. Demons are also our friends. Right? Angels are friends. Demons also are friends. We have a bigger company than most of the Christians. <laughs> right? Even Lucifer is my friend. The guy who was persecuting me, the next day Lucifer went to fight with him. Like, why are you troubling my person? <laughs> he called my father Lucifer. He said, your father is Lucifer. So Lucifer took it seriously. <laughs> and he made sure that he teaches him a lesson. In two years time, he taught him a lesson also. You are one. Even devil listens to us. Even angels listen to us. Hello. Therefore we don't cast out demons here because they are my friends. Right? Where people cast the demons there, we don't cast demons. We welcome them. Come. Join and help us. So, we'll do the meditation, but I want to take, talk to you, because we didn't have worship, I'm going to talk more. But this is the, this is an amazing part of we human beings. What is so amazing about humans, other than the animals? It's the difference. Humans, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse, look at it, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. 
Can you read this? Look. For we are God's fellow workers. In other Bible it says, we are co-laborers with God. Not working under God, but working with God. Everyone says we work with God. Not under God. This, that's what Bible says. It says, we are co-fellow workers. You are in God's field. You are God's building. Say, we are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to, to me as a wise master builder, blah, blah, blah. In other words, everyone say, I am working with God. I am a co-creator with God. So in other words, if something needs to, if you want a blessing in your life, it's not God who is going to work alone. It's you're going to work with Him. That's why a commitment is required. A ritual is required. Without your commitment and only His commitment, it is not going to happen. I say, I'm going to commit. I'm going to do this. See, and that's why what you want, you can achieve it by working along with God. Are you with me? Not begging from God, God give me this, God give me that. It's not going to happen. So we humans are co-creators, not like the animals. We humans are advanced co-creators. We can create things. Can I have the lights on? We are co-creators. Everyone say co-creators. Animals can't do that. Like how we can do it. If we want something, we need to create it. And so to create, we need energy. Everyone say energy. And I, last time I was telling, see, I was supposed to go to South Africa. My visa got cancelled. I mean, it, forget, I don't know whether cancel also is a good word. <laughs> Something happened. But we, did, we could not go. And so there's a, when that thing happens, there's a frustration, there's anger. You get irritated and upset. But I have to understand that is energy and I want to preach this so that we come to an understanding and realize that energy is neither good nor bad. Everyone say energy is neither good nor bad. But energy is powerful. So, you know, when people have breakups, it's, it's an energy. Everyone say energy. And it's the most powerful energy. Say it's the most powerful energy. That's why if you go through a breakup, either you can break your life and you can become drunkard your whole life or you can make your life or you go into a gym and become a bodybuilder. Some of the most great bodybuilders had a breakup and they channelized the energy. We call it Alchemy, alchemy, transmute the energy, negative energy into positive. We can make it positive. You understand? So when, uh, when uh, our visa thing didn't happen, the frustration and all this is a powerful energy. So I made sure I would not fixate myself and become frustrated. Rather, I will use that energy to do, go and create something. So I want you to understand this. When you're going through failure, failure, they say, you know, failure is a stepping stone for success. Why? Because failure is a more powerful energy than success. Failures make you more successful than success making you successful. 
So when you fail, be happy because now you're going to take that energy and you're going to see that you become successful. You understand? That's why sometimes I wait, I wait to people to frustrate me. To disappoint me. When people mock you and make fun of you, what do you do? Don't get depressed about it. But use that energy to create yourself as a better being, a better being. You understand? Like when, when people left the church and they were talking against us, I did not sit with that and became, become frustrated. Of course there was time where it, I, I did, but then there comes a time you say, this is enough, I want to channelize this and I want to go more up. You understand? Because it's an energy. And the more people trouble you and frustrate you, they are giving you more energy. Rejoice, be happy. That's how Moses was able to separate the Red Sea. Because this guy had energy of so many years, 400 years, right? Of Egyptians troubling the Israelites. 400 years of Egyptians giving energy to Israelites. And so Moses took that massive energy. The Red Sea parted. Where do you think it came from? Where do you think it came from? Where do you think that energy came from? That energy came from 400 years of persecution. And that's why Jesus says, Blessed are those who are persecuted. Why is he saying that? Because Jesus knows the more you are persecuted, the more energy you are getting. The more people make fun of you, the more you are waiting for your blessing and it is not happening. Are you feeling frustrated? Take that frustration and use it to build yourself up. Are you frustrated because your visa is not coming? Now take that energy and build yourself up. Are you frustrated because your job is not happening? Take that energy. Every time you have an issue with your workplace, oh, Bani, I see you talking to Vanika. Vanika. This one said like this, that one said like this. Take that energy and use it. Are you with me? When you're going through loss in life, that loss is an energy. Everyone says loss is an energy. Let's use it. Who told you loss is a loss? Loss is loss if you think it is a loss. You take that energy and make something good. So God has cre created us God has created us look at Isaiah chapter 61 Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. Everyone say, loss is an energy. Persecution is an energy. Failure is an energy. This is real doctrine, guys. People, Christians out there are preaching, no, you should not be fail. You should not be a failure. You should not be this. God loves you. No, rejoice when you fail. 
There shall be no loss in your life. Show me one Christian who had no loss. So we are not becoming practical. Loss of life, loss of things, loss of... It's an energy. And of course there is time that we need to be sad about it. I'm not... Let's not deny. Of course there is time that we have to be emotional about it. But there is time you take that energy and build yourself and myself up. Are you with me? Isaiah 61, 3. I am forgetting my Bible like now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, look at this. To give them beauty for ashes. God has created you. You are a co-worker with Christ. So that you can take ashes and create beauty out of it. Are you with me? You create beauty out of ashes. You make wealth out of waste. And that is a true Christian. A Christian is someone who goes through the valley of darkness and there he comes strong outside that valley. That's a Christian. He's a guy who alchemizes everything. Are you with me? And so we need to learn to alchemize. When things are not going in your, uh, the way you want it, become more aggressive and you're aggressive, you're disappointed. Take that disappointment, take that energy and use it to get your things done. Sometimes when people make fun of you, people make fun of you, build that anger up. Make more fun. I want you to make more fun. Because you're giving more energy. Make more fun. Make more fun. Make more fun. Build that energy. Build that energy. And then use it for yourself to grow. Grow strong. When sickness come into your life, it's an energy. Don't run away from it. That sickness is an energy. Use that sickness to build your own self up. Your joblessness is an energy. Your financial problem is an energy. Alchemize it. Say, I am going to make beauty out of ashes. Again, I am going to make beauty out of ashes. There's, there's a lot of things I want to talk. But let's do meditation now. Uh, and we are going to get into prayer. And if you are with me in this, and if we have one mind, one heart, trust me, we are going with a miracle. We are going with a miracle. We are going to go with massive power today. If we do this meditation right. We are going to go with massive power. Massive power. Meaning we are going to go with huge energy of these angels, this demons, these powers of everything. So if you're meditating on earth and you're becoming, going to become a friend of earth, the whole earth, the angels under the earth, the demons under the earth, everything is going to be on your side to give you what you want in your life. Can you believe that power? The archangels of the earth, the angels of the earth, the demons of the earth, whoever they might be.
the so called gods elohims of the earth whoever they might be you have to understand that when lab uh, joseph was cheated by laban laban's god spoke to laban not joseph joseph right who is he jacob jacob sorry jacob laban's god spoke to laban <coughs> when abraham's wife was taken away when isaac isaac also right something is some issues there i'm forgetting my bible i think i need to read it i'm reading more about demons and angels i think so these gods would talk to their to their people when his wife was taken he do you think abraham's god spoke to him let me tell you your boss's god is going to talk to your boss to give you your finances Amen. your judges god is going to talk to your judges to put that case in your favor it's going to happen everyone says it's going to happen there's going to be miracles okay so i won't go deeper into each element remember one thing every element has connection with many things even the even the planets and the stars are connected to the element even that shifts over your life okay so remember that let's put on the earth element this is how you do the meditation and you know most of us but we got to pray right now are you ready yeah. are you ready to take that massive power and go home tonight yes are you ready for your healing yes. are you ready for your miracle are you ready for angelic release of this elements over your life Okay so let's begin uh content music lights lights you can you are recording right and i want you to be completely engrossed in this meditation or in this prayer you will see if you are if you are really engrossed in it there will be somatic reactions that means you will feel it on your body if you are really engrossed in it you will feel vibration you will feel heat you will feel whatever like how you feel when you pray you have to feel it if if you are totally engrossed in it you got to feel it okay so yeah so how what you do is I don't 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 uh, uh, cut the recording. Communion means you come in union. That means all of us become one. All of us become one with the elements. That's called communion. And so we are. What we are doing is communion actually. after we finish this meditation we are going to take physically the communion believing that we are coming one with the elements okay okay so let's begin